Hi there, church family. Uh, it's Stephen and Vlad again. We're coming to you. Uh, this week's going to be a smaller or shorter video, uh, just of some reminders that we have for you, uh, some updates that we have for you, uh, and we're hoping to have some more in-depth videos and pictures ready by next week so that you can be more aware of some of the current events and some of the people that we've been serving and helping uh, over in Ukraine. Uh, but Vlad has some reminders for us and uh, some statistics to share with us for today. Good morning, church family. Today, I would like to take it down to just a couple minutes. And um, I pulled out some data, some information that probably would be um, helpful for us to reflect upon. We were choose by God to live in this time. We're living in the difficult times when the world is changing and changing so rapidly and things happen that uh, we didn't expect to happen. You know, you, you're aware yourself when you're going to buy the gasoline. Yeah, just last day, last night, I was trying to fill up my tank uh, and I uh, have uh, diesel, by the way. <laughs> so I stopped by a gas station over here and it was five ninety nine. dollars I remember when I was just a year ago, even less than that, I was uh, paying $1.89 for the same gallon. I'm paying almost six bucks right now. Uh, that's change, uh, but we can survive that. I would like to speak about only one town about the city that in the north of Ukraine. Six days of war, just the first six days of war, I have a statistics for that. The city named Kharkiv. By the way, I was born there, right next to it. And because of this war, in the first week of the war, 1,410 buildings were destroyed. 1,177 of those were apartment buildings. The people lived. In the first week of war, 69 schools were destroyed, the bombed. 15 hospitals and 53 daycare centers. Just think about that. Think about 1,177 buildings, and it's not just a house like we get used to in America. Uh, you have your own house and maybe duplex. This is a building set to have uh, 8, 12, 20 stores. And that's statistic for city of Park. How many people get their life destroyed? We know that over 6 million people um, left their places of living. We know that economy is probably shrink more than 50% in Ukraine. Just imagine that, the people not receiving uh, their salaries because they couldn't go back to business. Uh, private businesses are, you know, couldn't get any supplies and whatever supplies were left uh, over this time were used. Luckily, we have a lot of humanitarian humanitarian aid that coming from the borders, but that's still not enough. It's still, just imagine you have your bills to pay, and you have no house that you're paying your bills on. Um, churches became a hubs, hubs where people find a refuge. My uncle found a refuge in a church building in Kharkiv when a rocket struck his neighborhood and his house lost windows, electricity, all the supplies. And we talk about him, he's, he's in his 90s. He still, he is in a safe location right now, thanks God. But he spent weeks in the church basement being served by pastors and by the people who stand behind. Churches became a beacon of light. 
in the next video when Stephen going to make it, you will see people come to churches for the help. You will see lines of the people that come in to receive the food. There is no restaurants in those locations that are working. You couldn't go and buy burger. You couldn't even go and buy the gasoline. As of yesterday, I was talking to my friends. They were able to purchase a only three gallons of gas per car. And they have to stay in lines for three, four hours just to get that. Imagine that for yourself. Imagine that what you're going to see, you're going to see some buildings, some photos, some videos, um, and some people we do know, but we ask them to take those videos and pictures for us. All your possessions of your life that you had, pretty much gone. You had your apartment, you had your car. You had kind of like a life that you used to. Only things left is your life and God. That's reality. That's reality everywhere. It's reality in America. It's reality in Ukraine. So our call of to action is we as a church family, we have deep relationship as a church. We have body of Christ. We're part of I just experienced for the last couple of weeks uh, own body a campaign. Um, it's kind of laughable matter but end up costing me a lot of money and a lot of pain. Uh, Phoebe went to meet with uh, some sisters uh, into Melbourne, and she calls me and say, hey, I have a flat tire. Uh, so I say, okay, honey, I'll be there. It take me an hour and a half to drive. So I came over and um, I pull up the spare tire and I lay down in the grass and change the tire. And fire ants get hold of me and I was not aware of how dangerous they are. Uh, so three weeks later, uh, I'm still, I'm, I'm just finished my steroid treatment, second time, uh, just to get rid of the pain and suffering that I had. But just that little tiny incident cost me, um, not talking about finances, finances is a different story. I could not even drive, my hands were swollen, and just to, bite in my leg, affected my ears, affected my face, affected my hands. We have the same thing in the spiritual world. Enemy try to bite us, so we stop working, we stop doing things, we stop caring about everybody else. But as a Church of Christ, we do. The Spirit of God always calls us to action, always calls us to help the needy, to protect afflicted, to share the gospel. You only can share something that you have, something that inside you. You can't give somebody a million bucks if you don't have it. We're not asking for your millions. We're asking that we look inside us and have a deeper connection into the church body and to reflect upon that and to act upon that. God made us to be a salt of this earth. And he said that you are the light of this world. We all know that he is a salt and he is a light. But since he became part of us, we became part of him. And we act when he calls us to action. I hope that this message would touch your heart. And after you will see the videos and the pictures of uh, our actions, what you done, I'm blaming you. You give us some money, and God give us an opportunity 
you will probably see how God used you to proclaim His glory, to bring the gospel to the people, and at the same time help widows, help needy, help kids, help orphans, help people to survive. Because we were helping people that were putting their life on line. Some of them have lost their life doing that. But those people save the life of others and tell them about Christ and tell them why they're doing that. I would not call you to go to Ukraine and fight with the arms or uh, deliver some other people from war zones. Some of you might, some of you, who knows? But we as a church, we can be hands of God on this earth. Loving hands that sometimes you see those hands in your prayer, stand by like that. You know, we are His hand. We, with what we have, could serve the Lord. And let God bless you in this. It is really difficult for me to speak about all of that. But at the same time, I know that we live in the end of times. We are already affected by what happens in the whole world. And that's more spiritual than we even think about. We get used to economic calamities, economic calamities, we get used to political uh, you know, riots and all the things. Just We get used to that and then we're thinking it's another one. I think it's not on a deeper scale. I think that this is a good wake-up call that those who guard their hearts will hear the voice of God and act upon it. I'm just asking that God bless you and keep you and protect you. And we as one church would have deep impact on people around us, our neighbors, close and far away. God bless. Thank you, church. Uh, like you said, be salt, be light, be the body of Christ. Have a great day.